it's really um, a, a great opportunity and a great honor to be able to speak with you this morning. I, I believe that God is doing something amazing in, within our midst, in our lives. And uh, today's reposition too, so I want you to go to Habakkuk 2.2. And I believe that in order to reposition ourselves, you know, sometimes it's, we want God to reposition us. You know, we want God to do everything in our lives. And repositioning means that you get to do it. Uh, repositioning means to move, to change, to position oneself, to shift. And I think many times it's really difficult to make that change, to make that choice. And uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, I don't know if you remember, we started and uh, we started doing a vision board. Um, I think we did a couple of years. Uh, been, we were doing a couple of years as a church. But our family, we have we started doing vision boards for probably like more than I think it's 20. So I would say maybe at least 15 years we were doing uh, vision boards. And we love to talk about, you know, we love, we love to talk about this, per, this uh, specific uh, verse that says, then the Lord answered me and said, write a vision, make it plain upon a tablet so that a runners can read it, right? Another version says, so that ones who see it can run with it. And I thought about the beginning of this year, like, I think the beginning of this year, we did a couple of moves, and we started with the vision board, and I created my own vision board. I think I spent a lot of money on, like, I don't know, 20 magazines. And, um, and so I put it together, and by the time, I think by June or July, it's actually, uh, it's actually in my garage right now. Lost a couple of pictures already, you know, like, uh, which one did I? So anyways, I was thinking about that, and um, I'm like, we are sometimes silly, you know, in a sense, we, we have this kind of thinking that, you know, it is good to, to do, make it that a point, a visual point for you. But we think that that's what's going to make it, just my vision board and we're going to put it where we see it and we get to run with it. But many times we forget the first scripture and I want you to go to the first one, Habakkuk 1.1. 1, 1, and this is what needs to happen before you see the vision. It says, I will take my post. I will position myself on the fortress. I will keep watch to see what the Lord says to me and how he will respond to my complaint. And I think we love, I mean, I love the idea that I just get to do a vision board and I want God to bring it to pass. But if we read verse 1, it says that I will, it says I will take my post. And what does that mean? I'm so glad you want to know this morning. It means I will take my post. I will stand up my post. It means I will endure. It means I will abide. I will persist. I will be steadfast. I will present myself to stand still. Position myself means, it, and this is all in the Hebrew, to set oneself, to place oneself. It means you do the repositioning. And I believe many of us, maybe you're here this morning and you find yourself, well, we're already in October, right? Time is flying. And then you probably see your vision board or, or if you wrote it down and you're wondering, like, what happened? Where, where did God go wrong? Right? Because we, we, it's easily to put it on somebody else or to put it on God. I mean, I tend to put it on God. Like, like God, come on, you're taking your time here. You know, when is this going to happen? I spent twenty dollars just on one on Vogue, you know the magazine. <laughs> and I was thinking I should have just saved the money, because if I'm not gonna position myself, if I'm not gonna reposition myself, if I'm not gonna endure how I want, and, and what what do we put in our vision boards? We put our families, right? We usually do the same things. Uh, we put our families, we put our finances, we put how we want to grow this year, how we want to change this year. You know, we put our car, that we need to get a new car, or whatever. But see, at the end of it, or, or the reality is that we're not willing to endure. I want God to do it. I, it would be awesome if someone just say, you know what, today we're going to pray for your vision boards, bring it, and we lay hands and we oil you down with, uh, you know, Olive oil, because it's more holy, right? Instead of canola. 
Yeah, you olive oil, head to toe. In Jesus' name, you go home tomorrow. Your family's going to be changed. Your finances are going to go up. And your children are gonna, not, not going to talk back. The kids are coming back. And wouldn't that be just amazing? But I want you to examine yourself today and say, where am I in life? What position am I standing? Am I really, have I taken post? Have I really taken my, my, my life seriously? Have I allowed the things of life and the cares of life and the busyness of life and the hardness of life to drift me? Because it's so easy, so easy to drift away from what God has called us to do. You know, many times I, th I think we spend a lot of time figuring out what's my vision, what, what's my purpose. And, you know, your purpose and your vision, your vision is going to come when you, when you decide to stand still. Your vision is going to come when you decide that I'm going to endure whatever this year is going to come against me or for me. I'm going to endure it. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to stand still knowing that God is going to give it to me. He already gave me the vision. Yes, I'm going to make it plain. And yes, it's just so, the, so people can read and run with it, right? But do you walk around with your vision board everywhere? Like you're going walking around so people can run with you? No, it means that it means that people will read it because you have become you have become not just your we think about just the the, the material things. So I have become what he wants me to be as a woman of God in the season of my life with God, wherever season you're in, because we're all in different seasons. Maybe you're in a gray season, in a bad season, in a dry season, in whatever season. But in that season, God is with me. I'm standing. I'm not moving. And I will see because God is faithful. He's faithful to perform his word. So I think... We need to move from that thinking that he is going to do everything. I believe that if we don't reposition ourselves in this season, and I mean right now, we still have three months. Look at how I said three months, right? <laughs> three months. So I'm giving you an extra one. <laughs> Take it. Receive it. Double. Something is kicking in here. Pick me, Lord. Pick number three. And it's like four fingers. Okay. Come back. But I believe... I really believe that if we do not choose to reposition ourselves, you're going to miss the best time of your life. Because we think that in order to be walking in the vision, to be walking in the purpose of God, we think that it comes without any trouble. It comes without any pain. It comes without conflict. No, it comes with it. But that's what God would never ask us to endure something that we cannot and we're not able to do so. Everything that he asks us to do, we have the ability to do so. So if he's asking us to endure, to stand, that means you and I can do it. But then again, it's a choice. It's a choice. And, and many of us, and I've been there like, I don't want to choose. I'm sick and tired of choosing. But then again, we want our free will, right? Isn't it? We're funny people. God, you choose, you know, like, we're like, God, choose my mate for you. Bring my boas, right? And then when you choose wrong, like, ah, why do you bring me my, and you get rid of the B, the B and then you do the other word. <laughs> you get it? Some people got it. You get it later on. And we blame God because he brought you the wrong person. No, you chose that person. You chose that person. And so it's easy to blame God. I think we're living in times that everything we blame it, if not God, is Trump. <laughs> we had given so much power to a man. So much power to other people. And yet the one that holds the power, it's you because he has given us and gifted us with that power. I am in this situation because God cannot do it. No, he can. He already did. Now it's, will I align myself? Will I reposition myself to believe again, to dream again, to have faith again, to hope again? This is a good message, guys. Do you need me to sing another song? The people that come on Wednesday, we say, no, don't sing. I think it's time that we have to change the way that we think. 
we need to change the way that we think. I need to change the way that I think, the way that I view life. We have to, we got to change the way that we function. Many of us don't even know and we're very dysfunctional. And we're used to dysfunctionality. Because you know what? It's more, it's comforting. At least we know dysfunctionality. Because we're not willing to seek. We're not willing to stand. We're not willing to open our eyes and to, you know, just, just let's see what happens. If I just choose to follow Christ, if I just choose to reposition myself, if I just choose to open my eyes and to confront life as it comes. And maybe you're not in a great season right now, but let me tell you, you can be. You are able to be. You're able to be. We have to change the way that we deal with issues. Christians are the worst at confronting issues. We just want to pray them away. Yes, we encounter, you know, a little bit of conflict even in the, within the family, friendships, in the church. You know, in the church, there's always going to be conflict. Guess what? Because we're dealing with people. And you're like, yeah, those people know you. You, me, you're dealing with me, I'm dealing with you. So there's going to be that. We are looking for the perfect church where there is no conflict, nobody talks about you, nobody offends you. We do the same things, we're in unity and, and yes, we should do all those things. But the perfect church actually is in heaven. When we get to heaven, you know what, there's not going to be complaints, crying, we're not bickering. No, it's going to be just worship. But in the meantime... We get to be the church. In the meantime, you and I get to represent the greatest of the greatest. There's no one like Jesus. There is no one like our God. But we have to believe it. And that belief comes from a lot of my, me standing here this morning, it comes from a lot of pain. But I have chosen to reposition myself. I have a choice to either be stuck forever or move forward. But in order to move forward, and I have to go back and I have to stand po in my post and I have to position myself to endure, to be able to run what God has given me to do. What has he given you to do? Maybe you don't know what he has given you to do. When you're alive, if you have a family, you, your family comes first. If you have children, you know what? These children are going to know that there is a God who is alive. There is a God that nothing is impossible. You know, we come from poverty. We come from the worst place that anyone can imagine. This functionality to the 10th power. But I'm here to tell you there is a God who can heal our dysfunctionality. There is a God that help us how to deal with issues in a different way. And thus we confront those issues and they're ugly. But he has given us the power. I used to think, you know, Father, I just pray. You know, I used to pray for all the people that I didn't want to have, you know, confrontations. Father, I thank you that you will send people around them and you're bringing scripture to it, you know. Father, surround them with people that will talk. Oh, you, you convict them, Lord. And you think you're so right, right? Convict them, Holy Spirit. You dwell inside of them. And you're like, even doing this at home, like you're already like... <laughs> Thank you, Father God. You're going to talk to them. Thank you, Father God. They're going to be convicted. They're going to come and ask me for forgiveness, Lord. I'm prepared. <laughs> and we call that Christianity. And that's not Christianity. Christianity is like, Heavenly Father, I don't know now how to forgive this person because they have hurt me. And I'm going to tell you that feelings are real. But they're not truth. But they're real. And sometimes we as Christians, we're so afraid of our feelings. If someone tells you I'm having a headache, no, you're not having a headache in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> I'm going to pinch myself. Ouch. Did it hurt you? Okay, now I'm going to pinch you. See if it hurts you. See, we're like, no, no. I'm having a headache. You know what? Let me pray. Let me pray in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to agree with you. And I agree with you that you're walking the peace of God, that whatever you're carrying right now in your heart, I, I pray that God will give you wisdom. 
you know, we think we're winning battles, but then we're going through other things and we're not confronting life. We just, we just numb things. We just cover them. And God wants you to uncover. And, and it's not to expose you, it's to heal us. He wants wholeness in our lives. The reason that you and I have to reposition in the way to think, the way we think, the way we function, and the way we feel is because many times we're stuck. You can be stuck in between the lines. Have you ever been stuck in between the lines? I didn't say blur lines, between the lines. Somebody got it. We're stuck. And I'm going to tell you why we're stuck. We're stuck because we have limited God. Many times we're stuck because we have limited God. I limited my thinking because when I limit God, then I limit my thinking. Because I don't believe that God is enough. I don't believe that I am enough. That is called limited thinking. And when we have limited thinking, we gravitate towards limited people. We want to go back to our dysfunctionality. We want to go back to where I feel comfortable. So I want to go back to limited people. I just want to go back to people that are going to, like, pat me around and say, okay, that's okay. No, you need to go back to the people that they're not going to limit who you are, who your God is. You need to uh, get around. That's the moment that you need people that are going to embrace you. They're not going to be fearful of what's going on in your life, but they're going to embrace you as you are and lead you back to the power that we have in Jesus. So who are you going Who's limiting your thinking besides yourself? Who are you running to? Who are you calling? I think that's what the body of Christ is so needed. And we avoid the body of Christ. I don't know how you're going to do it in heaven. There's a bunch of people that you're going to be shocked to see them. They're going to be like, you're going to be like, you made it. No, you made it. You don't know where God is going to put you. There's mansions there. Imagine he puts you next to your greatest nemesis. And the nemesis made it. Who are we to walk around and be judging? I think it's time for us to reposition ourselves as a church and be the light. Be the light. I think we need to face whatever situation and let the life of Jesus be so evident in our lives. Uh, we were talking this, yesterday was our last brave of the year, so if you missed it, it's okay, I forgive you. But you get a chance to come back because we, we come back in January. Uh, but uh, we were talking uh, with Pastor Fabi and Pastor um, Jessica, and we're talking about you know, we were just in awe of the goodness of God and how good he is in our times of need. How good he is in every time, even if we don't see it. I believe many times, and it has come out of my mouth. I've been mad at God many times, have pointed the finger at him like that so he can know that I, I'm mad at him. You know, you don't have to point the finger at him. He already knows it. But I've been mad at him. I've been, whatever. But I'm going to tell you that He's always very present. He's always so loving. He's always ready to redeem you. It's the moment that you choose to do so. He's, he receives you as you are. If you're a mess, he wants your mess. If you're awesome, he wants you as awesome as you are. If you're good, he wants you as good as you are. He takes you as you are. Because he's not worried about where you are in life. He knows what you have within yourself. He knows who you are. He knows what purpose he has given you. He knows what you're going to do in this life. And the enemy is afraid of you. But we're talking about that, about that and the goodness of God. And we're talking about like I've been back, um, not back in a sense, I've been reading uh, uh, the gospels. Do you know what the gospels are? Okay, obviously not. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, so I already gave you the answer. You just have to read it now. 
But I've been reading and rereading it and rereading it and rereading it because I just want to know. I want to know, like, okay, the word is alive. So every time you get something new when you read the word, right? And so I was, we were reading the word, the three of us were talking about how awesome God is. And how never, he never leaves us. And then we were talking about Jesus. And we came to that conclusion that, like, oh, my, Jesus is so good. Like, we were, like, crying like the first five minutes but we're like Jesus is so good you should have seen us I think God was so happy and he was happy for us but as we were talking about that we realized that Jesus never walked around quoting the scripture you tell me when he quoted the scripture to people he only quoted the scriptures two times and the first time was to who to the devil he only quoted the scripture to the devil. And the second time he quoted the scripture was to religious people. But the rest of the time as he was uh, delivering people, healing people, transforming people, he just met the need. He says, what do you need? What can I do for you? And I think this is the time that we need to embody Jesus. We need to become Jesus. And we need to go to the people instead of you because you feel afraid or you don't understand what they're going through. Instead of you shoving a scripture in their throat, they're already feeling like they're choking. They're already feeling that they can't breathe. And we push the scripture. I think it's time for us to say, you know what? What can I do for you? How can I help you? Because that's what Jesus did. That is what he did. That's why he didn't walk around with the Torah. He walked around being the word. He walked around experiencing, walking what Jesus, that, um, I'm sorry, walking what the Father had given him. His purpose on this earth was to set people free. His purpose on this earth was to save those who were lost. His purpose was to love the unlovely. He didn't come to, to, to quote Moses. He didn't come to quote Joshua or, or no, he didn't quote nothing. He became, it's time for us to become the word. But how are we going to become the word if we don't know the word? I encourage and I believe that a lot of people now, they don't read the word. We just, we just uh, have little snacks here and there. And the snacks means you're sitting here, which I'm. So thankful that you come to church. But it's time for you to feed your own self. Don't just live out of podcasts and good preachings. Those are reinforcements. But this is what you live by. So many times we're asking, we're drowning. And, and you know what? The Holy Spirit is only going to repeat what the Father has said. And the Father sent his son and he became the word. So we're asking for God to speak. But you don't have, you don't know him. So how are you gonna how are you gonna know the truth and a lie? And even that, when you know the word and the enemy is coming and, and sickness is coming and whatever is coming, it's so hard. It's so hard to even okay, this this God is this God is in me. And that's knowing the word. You know, I I, I was listening to the news, so I read this news this this uh, week and and I was very it really hurt me to read this, and, and I don't know where, where, if it's here in L.A. or in California, but it says that this uh, child c committed suicide in, uh, at the age of 10. And it really hurt me. And I was like, how is that possible? 10 years old. 10 years old. And, and they were saying because she's being bullied at school. And, and I thought, you know what? Where is the church? Where is the church? We're so busy with politics and what, we're busy in other things. The enemy has come to distract us and we're not seeing that the, the, the people that are being lost, our children are being lost. And I was like, we need to reposition ourselves. We need to stop being afraid of things that we don't understand. And then yesterday I read another news, and this is within the same week. I read another news, and this is in another state. And this child, uh, he's eight years old, and he took his life. He committed suicide. And not only that, the mom said that he was being bullied, but he didn't want to go alone. So he, he got his six-year-old sister, and they both did it. Do you understand that? I'm like, how is that possible? Where are we? 
Where are we? No. Where are we? Where is God? I mean, there's children that are crying out. Like, they're, they're, they're crying out for hope. And yet, you and I, we carry the hope. But you know what? Because we can't, we're afraid to talk about those things. And I want to tell you why we're afraid. Because we're, we talk about that God is able to, to heal cancer. We say, you know what? There's nothing impossible for God. Every name uh, there is above his name. There's no name above his name. There's no name above Jesus above cancer. We say Jesus about even people that die. We're like, he can resurrect you from the dead. But we cannot address mental health illness. Because we are afraid. So you're telling me that my God, that your God who is powerful, he is not able to heal mental illness? No, the reason is that it's not that he is not able. He is well able. He is well able. What happens is that you and I don't know what to do with them. Because you and I are afraid. You and I, we don't know what to do. And you know what you do? You love people like that. If you know a child is being bullied, you go. You go to the family. If you know if you have kids kids in, in school, you make sure that you, you tell your children, you are going to be Jesus today when you go to school. When you go to school, if you see this happening, you love on that child. You tell the teacher. You tell the parents. It's time that for us to open our mouth. But we don't want to get involved because it's messy. And mental illness is messy. But people are being lost. People are taking their lives. Because you and I are afraid. Well, I have decided to reposition myself. And I'm praying that this church will reposition. And when I say this church, it's not that building, it's you. And that we're able to believe all, the full gospel, that God is able to heal any sickness. Whether physical or mental, emotional, my God is able to heal us. My God is well able to restore. It might not be overnight. That's not, that's, let not be, that, let not, that not be your focus. And we're like so fixated on when is God going to do it. Because I think that's when we get distracted. God hasn't done it. I've been believing for three years, four years, five years. But I think it hasn't happened because our heart motive is in his timing, not in his power. Let's put uh, the other scripture, the last one from Habakkuk. It says, there is still a vision for the appointed time. It's for an appointed time. It's not for your time. It's not for my time. Many times I've told the Lord, like, you're so late, Father. Are you Mexican? No. <laughs> if you don't understand it, okay, I'm not Mexican, but if you don't understand it, like people say for, for Hispanics, like you're, you're on Mexican time. Because what happens is they're always late. So in case you don't understand that joke. Okay, so there is still a vision for the appointed time. It testifies to the end. It testifies to the end until the day that you go to heaven. Whatever God has done in your life, he's going to testify his name. And he says, he does not deceive. Whatever God gives us to do, he's, it's, he's not a deceiver. What happens is we just want to do part two, verse number two. Right, right, it, make it plain, let's run. No, in order for, for people to run, you have to become that vision. What's your vision? I want to say people. I want to make an impact. on Then become it. And he says, if delays, if it delays, if in case it delays, even God is saying like my timing is perfect. But just in case, if, it doesn't say when I delay. It says if, means hardly ever will happen because that's my God, right? But if delays, wait for it. And I think that we quit. If it's just a little bit delay, like, I don't know, you know what, this powerful God is not coming through. So, you know what, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to divorce. I'm just going to move forward. I'm just going to get another church, go to another church. I'm going to get another job. And, and this is our life. There's no consistency in our lives. But then we want people to read. Look at me, right? 
I'm a woman of God. I'm a son of God. But people read like inconsistency, inconsistency, like now you're here, now you're there and everywhere. But then he says then, for it surely, for it is surely coming. It will not be late. Whatever God has promised you, it will not be late. See, it's not going to be late. So if, I think when he, he says the if, because then it doesn't make sense. He says, if it delays, right, it's giving us like if. I think that's when, if you choose not to believe me, if you go cray cray for a season, just if, right? See how God views us? Like, just if, like, come on, God, I have gone great care for a couple of times. So. But he says, just if. Let's say, if, Virginia, and just in case, if. He still brings it back with good news. He says, well, just wait for it. Just wait for it. Would you please just wait for it? Just wait for him. Just wait for him. Wait for him. Because it's coming and it will not be late. Because he's never late. He's not a man that he should lie. We have a good God. And I think it's time that we go public, yeah? I think it's time for us to be having an affair with God. Because an affair, you hide it. But if you're in a relationship... Remember when you were in a relationship, you wanted the world to know it. And I want the world to know it. Right? We go public and we're like, who cares? And you change your status on Facebook in a relationship. And then because you didn't wait for it, like three months later, single. <laughs> what happened? People say, no, it's because, you know, God, I thought God brought me my Boaz. But in the end, it happens that he wasn't Boaz. He didn't have a B. And it's just, you know what he says without the B? It was just, get it? Psh. You need to come on Wednesdays. You need to be trained on my jokes. Father, I pray for those who didn't understand. Or maybe you're covering them so they won't leave the church. And I think like, oh my God, this pastor cursing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we blame God because sometimes we choose a person and that doesn't work. And it's not that it's not working. It's that you don't want to put the work in it. You don't want to put the work in it. I'm not saying go get with the knucklehead or with the crazy person. But I'm saying like, you know, like. Come on, stick to it. Like, and I'm not talking about people that are married, okay, and, and then telling you to, uh, okay, that pastor said, like, I'm like, no, I'm talking about other things. Like, things are not working, and you're just like, goodbye. This is not, I'm not happy anymore. Like, the Bible doesn't say be happy, it says be joyful, because joyful is a state of mind, right? I think you have to be tough to be able to stand it, to be able to take position and reposition yourself. And let me just give you the last scripture. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful and, a, and, a, and it's appro inappropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet men cannot find out, comprehend, grasp, what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. You already have a sense. If, you, if you're here this morning and you feel like there's something empty, I'm missing something, it means that you have lost in a sense. You, you have lost your position. There's a sense of eternity within you. That's the purpose that God has given you. And I think you, you, have, to be, you have to be tough. If you want to see what you want to see come to pass, God already gave you the yes. He already gave you the promise. But now you have to fight and stand for it and endure it. You have the, the courage to, to, to believe. It's time to believe again, to dream again, to believe for your family. What are you believing for? 
or are you already giving up or you think are you thinking that you know God is not going to do it that he's already late or whatever you're saying like you know many times we just don't want to do the work I remember many years ago and this is was many years ago um, I was very sick and I was praying you know those powerful prayers that I've been showing you how to do uh, so uh, I, I was dealing with this autoimmune uh, disease and, and th my doctor said, we can't do nothing anymore, Virginia. And I was like, oh. and I was praying to God, like, come on, God, you, you can do it. You told me. And, you know, there again, you know, pointing the finger at God, right? And then I remember sitting with my doctor and she said, well, because it's an autoimmune, they don't know what to do with autoimmune. And she said, what you need to do is you need to change your diet. And I was like, no, that's the devil speaking. I know the voice of my father. I am his sheep and that is the devil. And many times we say that. No, I believe that God is going to heal me so I can eat chips. Because it had to do with my gut, right? I was like, no, I'm able to have soda in Jesus' mighty name. I can have Persian food and I was naming all the foods that I could have. And I was in the name of Jesus. I will eat the piles of rice. Father, I thank you that this body is metabolized and it's not going to hurt me. And then I went up in the emergency room. I, and I remember like being fighting even that. No, because God needs to do it supernaturally. God needs to do it. And, and yes, it is a yes, but there's things that you need to adjust. Reposition yourself. So I either suffer for doing good or suffer for doing well. But I remember like I was still very fighting God because you could be fighting God. No, I'm just going to believe that he's going to do a supernatural. And that's what we limit God. We get to a limited thinking, remember? And we limit God. And I remember God, um, I was praying one morning and I had just a little glimpse. And it was like vision and I ended up in heaven, thank God. In my vision, I ended up in heaven. But I was in heaven, literally, it was a vision that forever changed my life. And I still remember when I need to remember it. God will bring it to my attention. But I was in heaven and I was there, you know, like, okay, because I was super young then. I was like 18, no, just um, I was young. <laughs> and then I can see, I can see I'm in heaven. And then I'm like, my gosh, like, what? What happened? And I, and I was thinking, what happened? And then I remember being before God and he said, what are you doing here? He asked me, what are you doing here? And then I, of course, you know, I went into my 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 religiousness I said you didn't heal me I was believing that I could eat chips you didn't I ate a chip and look what happened and then he says no Virginia you refuse to you so you're here because you refuse to change you're here because you refuse to reposition yourself and it was just like that and then all of a sudden like I and I was like oh forgive me Lord forgive me for even losing fear of God we should have a fear of God like oh my gosh Lord and I remember asking God father give me he would never ask me he wouldn't ask me to do something if if I wouldn't have the power within me and the power is called Holy Spirit and I remember just praying to God father give me the strength to be able to change my diet and I'm going to tell you that within six months my body adjusted but my body would have never adjust if, if I didn't adjust my thinking. I probably wouldn't be here. And so let me ask you, what is it that you're doing that you think, nope, this is the only way God is going to do it. You're so stuck in how God is going to do it. And maybe you're never going to see the best days of your life ahead because it's not because he doesn't have them available for you. It's because you refuse to move and reposition yourself. So you need to think today. You need to examine yourself today. And you need to choose to reposition yourself. Okay, I want to pray for you.